All right, tonight we got a set of Yamo Studio Series S803s. Um, and after uh, watching some other YouTube videos by uh, Z Review, Zero, Fe Zero Fidelity, and Joe and Tell, um, I was looking around at these and happened to come across these uh, currently on, on uh, eBay right now, new 125 a pair. So that's. Uh, got to be a really good deal because when everyone else reviewed them they were much more expensive probably more in the 200 range is where they normally sit so I couldn't say no I had to had to grab a set and uh, we're going to take a look at them and maybe I'll keep maybe I'll keep them maybe I won't um, first before we get them open I've never actually the box is still sealed I've never heard them I've obviously seen them and watched YouTube videos about them and read stuff about them but uh, never listen to them we're gonna open them up look at them a little bit look them up and listen to them so before we get uh, the box open and everything we're gonna go down the spec list from Yamo's site they are rated at 57 Hertz up to 26,000 uh, sensitivity of 87 decibels which is acceptable uh, power handling is rated at 80 watts to 160 uh, 8 ohm, 1 inch soft dome tweeter, 5 inch polyfiber woofer, uh, crossover at 2 kilohertz or 2000 hertz, uh, enclosure is MDF, ported base reflex design, single binding posts, um, I think the there is a second set of binding posts for the Atmos, and then they come in black, walnut, or white, I got the white, and then they're rated at 12 pounds, Features, Dolby Atmos Ready, connections, points, uh, yeah, Dolby Atmos Ready. Uh, was there anything else we needed to touch on before we open them up? Yeah, I don't think so. So, and as you can see on the box here, they kind of have a, they show the Atmos, little uh, Atmos speaker you can buy separately, and uh, there, you'll see there's four, uh, whole, uh, uh, I'll say four metal grommets or mounting holes, whatever, where the Atmos speaker can attach to the top. And if you don't know what Atmos is, uh, I'm not big. Uh, I'm not really a movie theater uh, guy, but uh, these fire up and bounce off the ceiling and back down above you, so <clears throat> kind of give you the illusion that uh, things uh, uh, things that would be coming overhead or from uh, from above you. Um, nothing on the front that we didn't already go over. So I'm using my old steak knife here. That I just keep around to uh, well, do whatever I need. I need uh, when I need knife things done. All right. Okay. Get a whole little packet full of a bunch of Yamo stuff. Uh. If you're ignorant and need help, I'm sure you can go through this. All right. Oh, the grills are kind of stuck in there. It's fine. Nice molded styrofoam. Uh, are these magnetic? Yes. Yes, they are. Get those out of the way. Oh, wow. Those are white. Very white. Ugh. Lift them out here. Nothing else in the box. The box out of the way. All right. Get them in view over here. Look at the cover is open here. Uh. One cover. Come on. Tricky. There we go. A two covers. And these are kind of a nice, almost like a modern retro tweed, uh, kind of a coarse fabric. It, it's actually softer than it looks, which is kind of nice. Um, and then on the back side, you can see this is uh, probably three-eighths thick or of the sorts. 
uh, MDF as well that they've just had machined out. And then magnets sit underneath these pads. The pads prevent the, any scratching. But yeah, this is just a piece of a, a CNC MDF with fabric wrapped over it, which is good because it, uh, it makes it a quite rigid grill cover. Let's see if we can get the plastic off the main vent here. Like that. And, oh yeah. This guy. Ready? Alright. Yeah, wow. Just Arctic white in uh, here. First thing I noticed here is if you look at the top, if I get them in all in frame here, I don't know if you can tell, but they are wider in the rear than they are in the front. So they kind of uh, like a trapezoid, I believe it would be. Um, I don't know how well it's showing up, but yeah, they're wider to the rear. Um, not sure for any specific reason. Um, just so that I guess they're not a plain old box. Um, now we'll measure them in a second. Let's just look at them. There's your four holes in the top to mount the uh, separate, sold separately uh, Atmos speaker. <sighs> One inch soft dome tweeter. Five inch, what was it, polyfiber woofer. And let's see, oh yeah, nice, nice uh, thick soft rubber surround. And I really like this wide uh, port here, you know, nice, about a, about a hand, you know, good old size port. And then they put this kind of this base on the bottom here. And this is not, obviously not real wood. It's also MDF with a vinyl ramp on it. And then they got you get your Yamo badge here on the bottom side. And da, 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 da. it's just on the one side. I'm sure he's, he's probably seen in pictures. Um, obviously, this is not real wood. It's a uh, just a plastic waveguide that's been uh, has some sort of vinyl or laminate wrap on it. Which is okay. It still looks better than just plain black. I'm, so one thing that caught my eye about these is just the, the style. They have a very nice style, which uh, Yamo seems to be pretty good with their style. At least in my point of view, uh, their, their aesthetics do it for me. And then on the back, you got your uh, keyhole hangers or whatever, so to hang them on the wall. Um, first ones I've seen to come with two instead of just one in the middle. And then... These, the bottom, these are for the actual speakers. And then this set of binding posts, I believe, is for if you add attach the Atmos speakers on top, they hook here. But your main hook here is, as you can see, it says main go here. Now, what I always like to do, I'm gonna move this one over and use it to hold this one up. Okay, so you can see. I am gonna see how deep these Nanner plugs are. I'm going to use two different size, like usual. This is more your typical full size, higher quality Nanner plug. And uh, deeper than others. I mean, these are kind of long, but uh, a lot of uh, better quality uh, banana plugs are going to be kind of long. Yeah. Get it in the light here. Yeah. Oh, I can't find the hole. There we go. Oh, there we go. Um, I would still like a deeper binding post, but it's not bad. I think it's a little bit deeper than some of the other ones. And then now you're more uh, generic uh, banana plug. And even these, you can see this is uh, actually shorter than uh, um, most of your higher quality banana plugs. And you can see right down there in the base, uh, if this will focus, you can still see the, the little cuts for, uh, I don't know what you call these, that bulge out. But even when this is in, it doesn't even go in far enough on this short plug to completely, uh, uh, I don't know, go, all, go in far enough that even all the little bulges are in all the way. I can't, I guess, sorry, I don't have a better vocabulary for what the, what these little, uh, I don't know, fins or whatever stick out. If you know, put it in the comments. 
or give me just a better word to call that. So, I think that kind of wraps it up. Well, here, let's, uh, the dimensions were listed, but I didn't read them off. But that's okay, because I have a tape measure right here. This is going to be in inches, so uh, you uh, metric people across the pond. Ooh, this one has a bit of a, see a little right there above the tweeter has a little bit of a black smudge on it. Let's see if that will come off. So first impression for me from Yamo, so high hopes. Uh, front six and a half, rear seven and a half. So they get a whole inch wider going to the rear. Um, so overall, if it really matters, these things are seven inches wide. Uh, tall, 14 pretty much. And deep, nine and a half. Uh, if you include the little keyholes, I might as well call it 10. So, yeah, and they're kind of heavy, but you can still hang these on a wall. And let's see, the grills, I believe, go like this. Whoop, oh yeah, oh yeah, the magnets know where they're going. Boop, there you go. I know, I need to get a wide angle thing, but the S, this is just what the S9 does. So yeah, pretty cool. Let's, uh, uh, let's get them on some stands and do a sound demo. I got time, put all this into one video. All right, before we get over to the sound demo, I wasn't gonna open these up because just the way these are, uh, just the way these are put together, there's no uh, screws on the front exposed. But I did look, after looking at it, uh, there is screws, regular Phillips screws in the binding post or terminal cups. So, Let's, uh, whoops, let's pop these out and just see if there's anything interesting behind them. Um, we'll see if we can uh, see anything inside here. Maybe the crossovers are mounted to the terminal cups. All right, kind of got to be careful because these can't lay on their face. Oh yeah, come on. How'd they get that in there? There we go. Okay, make sure you guys can see here. Yep, the crossover is mounted on the terminal cup, which is not unusual. We'll use the other one as a stand here. Let me get you guys closer. All right, what do we got here? Um, this is on the main terminal. Uh, pretty basic crossover here. Um, only seeing one cap, one resistor. So, most likely, I can't see the traces on the other side. I'd have to guess this iron core inductor here, which is a, it's a nice gauge iron core, um, which is good. Um, this is most likely for the woofer first order. Uh, this is just filtering out, uh, be what, a first order six decibel slope or something like that. Uh, filtering out frequencies above 2000 hertz. And then uh, I'm assuming the air core inductor here, which is a smaller gauge, which is, eh, it's okay. It's, at least it's an air core inductor. And then an electrolytic cap. I'm assuming these two, they're doing a second order on the tweeter to block everything below a certain, you know, below 2000 hertz on the tweeter. Um, you can get away with doing just a first order on the woofer because it's physical mass is going to prevent it from uh, wandering too far, but um, I still would rather have a second order, at least a second order on the tweeter. Right now, the way this sits, the Sony SSCS5s and the DCM and the Pioneers all have uh, arguably a more robust crossover than this. Or I don't know if I want to say robust, but a, a better uh, a, a better crossover. We'll just keep it simple. I mean, this is this is better than what some come with, but. This could definitely be better. I don't. I don't like that they used a basic 
just a basic uh, electrolytic cap on there. I would have preferred that be an audio grade cap. I want to see what these, uh, the terminal cup for the uh, Atmos is. If it's just a bypass or what's going on here. Yes, it looks. I don't know if I can get my hand in there. No. It feels like it's coming off the tweeter. Get this pulled down here. Sorry if you guys can't see it, but I even I can barely see up into this cabinet. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, that's not that's way different than what I thought. Okay, I see what's going on here. I'm not sure why they did it this way, but it's just another way to do it, I suppose. Um I'm sure if you looked in the documentation it would show you this, but these two terminals, you would run your other set of wires, um, because, uh, yeah, you'd run your other set of wires from your stereo for your Atmos, your, your wires for your Atmos, we'll say, to these terminals. The, the two wires from these just run straight up to these two metal holes right here. So when you set that Atmos speaker on top, that's how it's getting its connection. For whatever reason, instead of just running the wires right into the back of the Atmos, uh, oh, let me get this out of the way so you can see the top here. For whatever reason, instead of just running, you know, you got your wires that go to these and then your Atmos wires. I don't do Atmos or anything. I'm assuming it's just another set of wires that run to the Atmos speaker. Instead of running them right into the back of the, you know, the Atmos speaker would be sitting on top here right into the back of the Atmos speaker, you run them into here, and then they get their positive negative from these two prongs, which is really, I guess it's neat, but it's kind of unnecessary. I, I mean, am I overlooking something here? I don't really do home theater surround sound Atmos, all that stuff. I'm a 2.0, 2.1, 2.2 kind of guy. Um, so yeah, I don't really see why it's different, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know why they didn't just, why you wouldn't just get rid of this and just, I mean, if that, I don't, never seen that most speakers that sit on top here, maybe they're really small and they don't have room for a whole terminal cup, but why do you have to use matching terminal cups? Why couldn't you just put a set of, uh, actual just binding posts on the back? So I don't know, but either way, um, I thought we'd have a, I seen that these were Phillips, I thought we'd have a look inside to kind of see what's going on here, and I was actually, for the price range these kind of started out at, and um, kind of the reputation they have, I was actually expecting a more, a slightly more sophisticated crossover in these, um, trying to see the back of the woofer here, uh, where's my light? Uh, no mo no uh, number uh, or no branding or anything on the back of the woofer. It's uh, just a generic stamp steel basket. Woofer uh, does not have vented pole piece. Um, nothing doesn't look anything like there's anything super special about it. But it's typical. A lot of these mass-produced speakers like this are gonna have just a stamp steel uh, basket that can be punched out all day long. I'm trying to get get at so I can see the back of the tweeter. Uh, tweeter is absolutely tiny. The motor or magnet structure on the back of the tweeter is tiny. The, uh, uh, we'll call it the motor structure on the back of the DCM, the Pioneer, uh, and the Sony. This was all much larger than that. Um, yeah, that's going to be a very, um, I don't know if Yamo engineered these i'm sure they engineered them to a degree to uh get what they wanted out of these speakers but they are a very um i don't know what the word uh, they're really nothing special i don't know if i can even if i can get it so up so you guys can see in there i'll try because you know why not let me get my light on here this is gonna be very difficult
And you can kind of see up in there. I wish I had a brighter light down here. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if my... Hold on, guys. Let me see if my head strap here is still charged up. Oh, there we go. I, I'm... Get the camera to focus up in there. He's, uh, you can kind of see it up in there. The flashlight keeps getting in the way. Let's see if I can get this foam more out of the way. I got pretty small hands and I still can't get my hand up in there. <laughs> there. Now can you see it? See that little guy? Oh, this thing's about dead. Yeah, I should have known. I seriously don't have a flashlight down here. I just have to go back to use my little light. There. Yeah, it's a uh, relatively small tweeter. I wish it would focus in there, but I don't think it's going to. Let me try this. There we go. Kind of. It keeps trying to focus on the light, but yeah. And I'm just trying to get it so you guys can get the best out of it. But yeah, very, uh, um, not much bracing in the corners or anything. You can kind of see where the wires go up into the corners there to those metal pins. Um, but yeah, that it's the weird thing is, and I don't, come on, uh, whatever Yamo is doing, I it, it mean, just because the tweeter is really small like that, it's still they still sound really good. It's just I was expecting more. I don't know if I can get this to where you can see the woofer. If it wasn't for that piece of, little piece of poly stuff in there, I could probably, easier, let me use this to kind of shove this up higher. Get up in there. There we go. There you go, there's the woofer. Here, oops, go through this hole. Focus on it, camera. There we go. I don't know if you can see that it's a stamped steel basket or anything. There's the plastic port. It is flared on both ends. Um, the front baffle looks like it might be like double thick or something. I'm not sure because you can kind of see it steps in uh, right above the port there. I can't tell if it's just really thin around the port or if there's actually a second layer of MDF around the, you know, the rest of the front baffle. I mean, they got some good weight to them, so the cabinets are a pretty decent thickness. Uh, let's do a rough uh, five eighths. Five eighths overall. I'm assuming, uh, yeah, all the no side to side bracing. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I thought there'd just be more going on in these, um, especially being where they're priced. It's really not not that surprising, I guess. Um, the engineers, you know, that design these, uh, they know where they can cut corners and what they can get away with. So overall, this, I mean, I don't like doing this before I listen to them because if if I see it, I mean, I've been building speakers for quite a while. I still most time only know about 50% of what I'm doing because there's just, if you really want to build speakers properly, there's a lot, a uh, lot to know. Um, and, but I know enough that when I look at these, um, there could be some things I see that kind of could, you know, like seeing this crossover. It's a good crossover, but I expected more. So I would rather find out after I listen to them instead of before. Because if, if I've seen this before, then I'm kind of going to, you know, be a little bit turned off and I'm going to be thinking about that crossover. So overall, they are, they still are what they are. They still sound really good. Um, I mean, I guess it doesn't change anything. <laughs> I mean, it might for you mentally now that you've, uh, you know, it's like that. I don't know what the a good analogy would be but it's kind of like a sometimes it's kind of like this is a really pretty girl then you 
see her with her clothes off and then you're kind of like, eh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on to the sound demo. All right, something I like to do to get a fresh, new, stiff woofer to loosen up a little bit before I listen to it is I'll, I'll just jump on YouTube and put on like a 30, 40, 50 hertz sine wave and uh, crank it up a little bit. Not so much that you're going to hurt the woofer and just kind of let her flop around for a while. And uh, a lot of times this helps kind of get it loosened up and uh, any moving parts kind of seated and set in and then also if you, you go through you know 40 50 60 70 80 90 uh, do all these different tones sometimes it can expose uh, some resonances and vibrations in the box and so far both these have not had any there uh, no odd vibrations or anything so yeah I just, just thought I'd show you real quick here before we get the sound demo going I am going to listen to a few songs, but I'm not going to break these things in for like 72 hours or anything before I do the sound demo. I'm just going to, this is all the break in I'm going to do, and it's just to kind of help loosen the woofers up and kind of let them, get them uh, settled in. And uh, just because, yeah, most people that buy these are, are, are uh, going to have some first impressions right out of the box, so I'm fine with that. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video later. All right, got them all set up. Are you ready for these speakers sound to be demoed? Yeah, whatever, let's go.
Okay, I think we're back to the beginning here. Now, while during the sound demo, a few thoughts. Um, Sound-wise, uh, after watching Joe and Tell's video where he tested these and got the response curve, I totally, uh, I hear what he was saying. Uh, these, the way they're designed, they have a bit of that smiley EQ where the, the low end and the high end are boosted just a tad. Um, not so much to me that it's really annoying. Uh, I actually kind of like that and a lot of humans like that because our ears are typically more sensitive in the mid-range area because that's kind of where uh, a lot of what we deal with day-to-day, -day, uh, uh, you know, what we hear day-to-day -day, uh, exists in that range. So our ears are typically a little more sensitive in the mid-range area. So these having the bit of a smiley, you know, having that low end and the high end bump just a bit, uh, to me, I like, I actually kind of like that. Now, I don't like it when it's done too much, but uh, uh, on a small speaker like this, it kind of makes it seem bigger and brighter than it is to me. Uh, the tweeters are, you know, accurate, clear, um, detailed without being harsh. Uh, and the low end is, uh, it's, they put out more, more bass than I thought they would, but without being boomy either. Uh, sometimes uh, they push the bass on these smaller bookshelf speakers and they can end up boomy. Now, my space is, I have plenty of acoustic treatment, so that's going to help. You know, if these were in a, a bedroom with, you know, a lot of hard surfaces, they could possibly get boomy, but so could many other speakers. So I, I do like that they have a good, tight, uh, seems to be a good, uh, how do I want to put it? Uh, getting down 57 hertz is plenty low for a bookshelf speaker. Um, you know, it gives you room to add in a subwoofer, but they get down to 57 really well. Um, you get plenty of bass, but it still seems tight and accurate. Um, seems the, I'm not sitting directly in between them because the camera in the way, but from where I'm sitting, the, the, uh, uh, imaging seems really good. The depth of field and all that, I mean, they sound very realistic, uh, to me, um, Looking at them, sitting here looking at them, that trapezoid shape where they're narrower in the front and wider in the back. The only reason that right now that I can think of why they did that is it allows them to have a larger enclosure while when you sit in front of it, it still looks small. Because if the back or if the front was as wide as the back, it'd be more like the DCMs where they kind of just got this broad flat front um, where doing a narrower front makes them appear narrower kind of than they are because they I mean they are that narrow and they aren't because they're that narrow in the front and they're not in the rear so I think that's kind of Yamo's little way to make them look a certain size when you sit in front of them but actually still gain a little volume inside the cabinet by making the rear wider than the front and it's not when you sit here and look at them from the front it's not noticeable you really don't notice that the rear is wider so if that's what they're doing it's a neat little trick to kind of gain an extra tad bit of uh, cabinet volume without making the front of the speaker look so wide and big. Um, anything else to say about them? Uh, they're very, to me, I mean, I know my basement's very basement-y looking. It's not some, you know, all white, sterile, you know, perfect environment, but uh, they do add some class to the room, I'll say that. They are sharp little speakers, especially, uh, uh, I think this is my first set of white bookshelf speakers. I was kind of bouncing back and forth between the uh the what is it? it's like a slightly darker black with the uh, you know the walnut inserts and everything which i really liked but i'm like i already have a lot of black speakers and wood colored or wood looking speakers i don't have any white speakers so i think i decided i was going to go with white just in case i do hang on to them because i might stick these on my desk upstairs they are a little they might be a little deep for a computer desk but if not, I might uh, set them next to the TV upstairs. They, I think these, if you're not looking for like tons of floor shaking bass, if you just want a nice set of bookshelf speakers for uh, movies and TV, I think these would be pretty darn good for that because having those nice clear highs would be good for vocals. And then the, uh, the low end on these, I, you know, like I said, it's not going to shake your living room, but watching a movie on these without a sub is probably still pretty impressive. Uh, you're gonna get plenty of uh, plenty of uh, low end for them explosions and stuff. As long as you don't crank them up too much and 
you know, overwhelm them, which again can be done with any speaker. Uh, uh, these are this time I, I think the the other speakers I did too. I've been powering them off my Rants SR4021 just because it's a more, you know, just a it's just a good class AB two channel receiver, which is going to be more in the realm of what most people are using. I'm not using the bearing or A800. Uh, as much anymore for the sound demos just because it's a class D and it's not what most people are going to have so I like the sound of both of them they do sound different but I, I have no problem with the sound either, of either one I'm not just not that picky so oh anything else I don't think so I like them at 125 bucks which is what I got them for worth every single penny even I think they normally run around 180 to 220 in that range, and even at that price range, 220s, yeah, because the the Sony CS5 or SSCS5s roughly hover around 100 to 150, and they to me they come really close to these. These I think have a bit more low end, and the tweeters are just a tad bit cleaner and, cl and better, but. Uh, It'd be it'd be tough if if these were if these are my these and the Sony's are my only two choices and the Sony's were a little cheaper I'd probably just go with the Sony's because I don't think these really sound that much better than the Sony's but right now as I make this and I posted it on Hi-Fi Guides these can be had for 125 on eBay I don't know how long that'll last I think even Amazon has them for 169 which is still not bad that's totally doable. Now the only thing with the Sony's is they they're not to me they're not as aesthetically pleasing to me. They're a very they're just a black bookshelf speaker as though they look good as a black bookshelf speaker. The uh, <clears throat> excuse me the Yamos are a much more stylish uh, modern design whatever you want to call it. So if you're into something that's a little sharper and you're gonna get some attention and maybe even get the good old wife approval the wife acceptance factor the Yamos are probably gonna win that battle. Now, sound signature, uh, the, I got the DCM sitting there because I, uh, I don't know. They, they, they're weird for me because I get bored of them, but then I don't ever take them down. Um, I did listen to them side by side before this, and listening to the DCMs next to the Yamos kind of made that uh, smiley EQ built into the Yamos where the high and the lows is bumped a bit more noticeable because the DCMs, to me, seem a lot flatter the lows aren't overdone and the highs aren't overdone they just i don't know they're you know, they're not overly high and crisp and they're not overly boomy and low they're to me they're a pretty flat speaker which if that's what you're looking for it's a good thing i have no problems or no issues with the way the dcm sound they just i can't really compare them to the Yamos because they're they they have two completely different sound signatures it's not fair to compare them because some people are going to like the the flatter sound of the DCMs more than the, uh, uh, you know, the sound of the Yamos. Again, I'm not that picky. If I had it my way, I'd just keep them all around and, you know, listen to them as my mood changes. But, yeah. Uh, again, if you kind of, this is just how I do it right now. If you like it, you know, like, subscribe, hit the little notification bell if you want. Um... Throw down anything in the comments. Like I always say, if you have any questions about these things, anything you want me to do with them, uh, just put it down in the comments. If you have a pair, let me know what you think they sound like to you and you know, whatever. All right, good night, guys. Bye.